Here's a bonus for you, pelotophobia, the fear of bald people. <laughs> Fear is a natural emotion that we all experience. It's an evolutionary trait that has helped humans understand and avoid danger for thousands of years. But for some, their fear becomes a phobia, an anxiety disorder that causes them to be persistently fearful of an object or situation. And while some are quite common, like arachnophobia because spiders are God's mistake, others are beyond irrational and straight up weird. So today, I gathered the absolute strangest phobias that people have, and yes, these are are all real. So here they are, 10 extremely bizarre phobias people actually have. Number one is ablutophobia. Taking a bath is a relaxing activity that many people enjoy, but not everyone feels that way. People with ablutophobia have an abnormal and unwarranted fear of bathing, washing, or cleaning themselves in general. Statistically, more women and children suffer from this phobia than men, although children generally grow out of it. Faced with bathing, ablutophobes will show common phobia responses such as panic, shortness of breath, and they will go above and beyond to avoid the bath. In other words, try to get them in the bath and they'll go mental on you! This phobia has been around for a long time. In fact, the film Psycho from 1960 was one of the earliest horror films to affect its audience with this type of phobia after the famous shower murder scene. For anyone affected by this, I have a simple cure. Just do what I do. Lay back with some scented candles and a Celine Dion record playing. I mean, uh, only take a shower because showers are for men. Yeah. Number two is philophobia. Some people stop in the name of love and other people get utterly crippled in fear by it. People with philophobia have a strong, unwarranted, and persistent fear of falling in love. This fear can evolve from a horrible experience from a past love or relationship, leading to the desire to be secluded from others. In many cases, religions with prearranged marriages can lead to the development of this phobia. It's affected many people over the years, most notably Queen Elizabeth I of England, who is believed to be philophobic. Throughout her reign, she had many suitors court her, but but things never developed into marriage or any sort of serious commitment. It's believed that her fear stemmed from her mother and Boleyn and her cousin who were executed for love. Man, but love is so sweet! How could anyone ever be afraid of love? Number three is hypnophobia. If you thought Nightmare on Elm Street was scary, just imagine a little tiny Freddy Krueger in your mind waiting to terrorize you every night. Hypnophobia is the irrational and excessive fear of sleep. It can stem from a feeling of loss of control, repeated nightmares, or the desire to take back the time you lose while sleeping. This is an especially dangerous phobia because it can cause sleep deprivation, which disrupts your brain function, weight, and coordination. Now avoiding sleep completely is impossible, as brief micro sleeps cannot be avoided, however, the extended absence of deep sleep can cause death. Those with this phobia can only sleep for brief periods at a time, which ultimately causes a severe degrading of one's quality of life. Hey, sleeping is an ordeal for me too! Not because I can't, but because it's so hard to get out of bed in the morning. Everything is so warm and snuggly. The struggle is real. Number four is heliophobia. It's not just vampires, yes, now you too can be deathly afraid of the sun. Heliophobia is the fear of the sun, sunlight, or for that matter, any bright light. Often stemming from a severe sunburn, this phobia also has people removing themselves from sunlight due to its connection to skin cancer. Other medical conditions such as eye and skin sensitivity to light can also lead people to develop this phobia. In pop culture, the fear of light has become a telltale sign of supernatural creatures such as orcs, vampires, and ghosts, although the real life implications of this phobia are anything but fiction. This phobia can be combated through exposure therapy and talk therapy, although until they are cured, those affected by it have to take large amounts of vitamin D supplements. I'm not so much a heliophobe as I am an internet lover, I just... I don't get outside much. Number five is ecophobia. Remember being afraid of the monster in your closet as a kid? Well, just imagine your entire house is that closet. Yeah. Ecophobia is the fear of a home or the contents of a home. In 1808, the poet Robert Southey first used the term to describe his desire to leave home and travel. His usage for the term as a synonym for wanderlust became quite popular among other 19th century writers and thus the term for the phobia stuck. Then in 2004, research determined that this phobia is an adolescent mindset that eventually passes. You know, leaving home is something that we all have to do eventually. Especially when you get a coupon for two for one Big Macs. You don't question that, 
you just run towards it. Number six is trypophobia. To us, they're just holes. To them, it's pure fear. Trypophobia is the pathological fear of objects with irregular patterns of holes, such as ant hills, beehives, and lotus seed heads. There are thousands of people who claim to have this phobia, with websites and even Facebook pages dedicated to it. Although, to be fair, there's Facebook pages dedicated to everything nowadays. No, I don't want to like your page dedicated to how much you like cheese. Those who suffer from this feel physically sick or even even pass out at the sight of holes. Interestingly, despite the number of people claiming to have this phobia, it is not officially recognized as a condition by the American Psychiatric Association. It's believed that sufferers may develop this condition based on past negative experiences with holes. Oh, I can think of one. Plot holes in movies, god those tick me off. Number seven is Poganophobia. Oh yes, the beard is on fleek today, look at that, yes. Well, if you're still here, congrats, you don't have this. Very simply, Poganophobia is the fear of beards. In the United States, no president has worn a beard since the 1800s. Part of the reason for this is that it's believed that sporting a beard is bad for one's political career, which is partly attributed to this phobia, albeit in a minor way. Those who suffer from this phobia believe that beards reflect a suspicious streak of individuality and defiance. This also partly explains why professionals risk their reputations if they abandon their razor. Being afraid of beards is completely irrational. However, being afraid of handlebar mustaches and mutton chops is perfectly understandable, as those always incite pistol duels. Number eight is neophobia. This fear generally manifests in the elderly along with their complete loss of driving skills. Neophobia is the fear of new things or experiences, however, in its milder form, can manifest as an unwillingness to try new things or break away from routine. It can also be used to describe anger, frustration, or trepidation towards new things or towards change in general. So if you're one of those people that hates change, that means you. This phobia leads to a conservative and reactionary personality and can cause depression due to a lack of change in one's life, i.e. things become boring. A more specialized version of this phobia is technophobia, which is more specific to fearing new technology. Food neophobia is quite common in toddlers and young children who have a fear of trying new and unfamiliar foods. I'd say it's safe to assume that people with this phobia hate the internet because it's all new all the time. Reddit must be their version of the boogeyman. Number nine is nomophobia. You can have my phone when you pry it out of my cold, dead hands. Nomophobia is the fear of being out of mobile phone contact, or in other words, no access to a mobile phone. The term nomophobia is actually an abbreviation for no mobile phone phobia, which was created during a study in 2010 by the UK Post Office. A UK research company called YouGov looked into the anxieties that mobile phone users suffer and found some pretty interesting statistics. They found that over 53% of mobile phone users suffer severe anxiety if they lose their phone, lose network coverage, or run out of batteries. The stress level that some feel from nomophobia can be quite severe and can be the equivalent amount of stress as a trip to the dentist or even wedding day jitters. I'm not ashamed to admit it, I am one of these people. If my phone's battery dips below 80%, I have a slight aneurysm. The first step is admitting you have a problem. And number 10, panphobia. <laughs> Kind of like that. Those who suffer from panphobia have a vague and persistent dread of some unknown evil. In other words, they're afraid of everything. The term was created in 1911 by psychologists and was defined more broadly as a state where patients fear absolutely everything. Academic literature has pointed out that panphobia may be a piece of a larger and more complex state of mental disorder. This broad fear has also been linked to those who suffer from generalized anxiety disorder. A 2011 film, The Fantastic Fear of everything plays around with this phobia with its central character played by actor Simon Pegg. Since those who have this fear fear everything, do they fear the fear of everything? Whoa, meta. And that's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed this, you should definitely check out the new video by my friends ASAP Science called Can You Be Scared to Death? It explores the evolutionary history of fear and the psychological reason that you can die from fear. Not only are they good friends of mine, but they make amazing content that I think you guys are really going to love. So, if you want to check them out, click the annotation on the screen or the link in the description. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you later on my social media and on my second channel. I love you guys. Peace.